Spanish painter Salvador Dali is perhaps the most famous surrealist painter of the 20th century. But his painting of the Christ of St John of the Cross, my own personal favourite of his work, was painted long after the surrealist movement had parted company with him. Surrealism, or super-reality, valued the realm of dreams and a subconscious, believing them to hold as much validity to the human experience as woken consciousness. The movement peaked in the 1920s and 30s, encompassing a wide range of artistic disciplines from music, painting, writing and film. It also had ambitious socio-political aspirations. Nevertheless, after World War II, surrealism had collapsed in on itself, its prominent members, like Dali, being ousted from the movement for various infractions, or leaving it of their own accord to pursue their own paths. Dali's political affiliations were at the heart of his differences with the other surrealists. His sympathies aligned more with those of Franco Spain and he returned there to live and work after spending the civil war years in France. By the early 1950s Dali had embraced a new style he called nuclear mysticism and his painting of the crucified Christ remains the standout work from this time. His painting was based around sketches made by a 16th century Spanish friar and mystic, John of the Cross, who had received a vision while praying in his monastery in Avila. This image of Christ on the cross that was shown to John was laid out in an unusual perspective. Dali saw these images on a visit to the Avila monastery. In what Dali referred to as a cosmic dream of his own, he imagined the Christ figure as the nucleus of an atom, the triangular shape from the head to the outstretched arms forming a representation of the unity of the universe. Using Hollywood stuntman Russell Saunders as a model, Dali began work on the painting. The finished article was clearly Dali's own work, but the rather awkward title, The Christ of St. John of the Cross, recognised the influence of the 16th century friar. I find it fascinating that one of the most loved paintings by a man who played such a part in surrealism and the promotion of dream states was essentially a depiction of someone else's vision. I've stood in front of this painting many times in Glasgow's Kelvin Grove Museum and the reason I love it so much is that it never fails to confound me. I never quite know if I'm looming over the cross looking down on it or if I'm standing on the ground looking up as it sails over my head. And the Christ himself is like no other I've seen. The head is bowed and the face is completely hidden. There are no nails, no crown of thorns. It asks me far more questions than it answers. And perhaps that's the essence of truly great art. But Glasgow is a city with a sectarian undercurrent and the painting has roused passions in its time there. In 1962, it was attacked and damaged by a rock wielding student and the canvas was badly torn. Despite the excellent repair work, you can still see the evidence of this. It was attacked again in the 1990s when someone fired an air pistol its way, though it didn't sustain any damage on that occasion. I like to think that in more recent times, Glaswegians have taken the painting to their hearts. Certainly for me, it's always a must-see whenever I'm in the city.